Welcome to Film Reel. <laughs> I'm your host, Matthew Wegg, and joining me across the table, as always, Chet Severn. Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, also joining me today is uh, Xander Blake. Hey, how you doing? Uh, Chris Lara. Yo, what's up, guys? And newcomer to uh, Film Reel in general, Daniel Peterson. Hey, what's up? How you guys doing? All right, guys, so we have a lot to talk about today. Let's first let's start talk about the box office and how somebody was almost spot on. Congratulations go to Matthew Wegg for accurately depicting four out of the five of the top five thank you, for thank you, this thank last you. weekend. Thank you. Just going to give you guys a rundown. Top five box office. We have Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children coming in at number one with $28 million. <laughs> Well, both me and Matt. Said it was going to be first, so yeah. Chris Lara, you were interrupting box office report. Hey, hey. Sorry. And then at number two, we have Deepwater Horizon making twenty million. Magnuson Seven stayed in top five, moving to third with fifteen million. Storks came in at fourth with thirteen million, and then solely round out top five with eight million in box office. Mm. So guys, I'm I got just, four and five right. You know, I'm just mm. glad that Storks did poorly. <laughs> it sounds stupid. <laughs> 13 million isn't anything to sneeze at. That doesn't at. sound It's yeah. a 3D bad. movie, and it was like another week of it. It did not do that well compared to the other movies. Well, technically, it only made its budget back worldwide. That's yeah. good. <laughs> so. Um, you know, that's still probably a loss, I bet, for the studio, because they got to do all that marketing, too. Well, considering that it's only been two weeks, all your made budgets probably still make more money. It's kids' movies. We're going to keep seeing it. It's going to be a box office success. Sorry, Xander. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> I I want stupid premises for 3D movies to end. Can we just end it on this one? Are we done? Can we? I mean, we got freaking Angry Birds. Okay, <laughs> I I am done with movies that are just come with the stupidest ideas and be like, hey, look at me, I've got a great idea. It's a 3D movie. Kids love 3D movies. <laughs> to, be, to be to be quite fair, there was a little bit of a political undertone that came with. Angry Birds, so it wasn't just like flat out. You know, oh, I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just sick and tired of all these 3D movies making so much money. I want them to fail. I honestly didn't know that 3D movies were still coming out. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was a dead phase. Yeah. No, but guys, what we really should be talking about is Masterminds not even topping the top five at all. Boom. Coming out this weekend. Boom goes the uh, Only made <laughs> $6.5 million. I'm very surprised. Womp womp. Don't mess with Tom Hanks or Clint Eastwood, as someone has learned. <laughs> what? Yes, I'm talking to you, Matt. <laughs> For which thing? Yes, because I put Masterminds at five instead of Solely at five. If I had put Solely at five, I would have had five out of five. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. I'm I surprised mean, <laughs> Sully didn't do better. Yeah, it should have. I mean, you have Tom Hanks behind that. Mm-hmm. And Clint Eastwood. I, I want to I talk exactly. about Manny what, is, what is Queen of Ketwa and why did it go up 718%? That's um, a story about a chess group, a group uh, that plays chess in Africa. Am okay, I well, that's a that's an incredible a yeah, increase that's there. Sounds boring. It got open <laughs> to the reason why it's because it got accepted into more theaters. Ah, it was that makes sense. It was wider and people, it was getting good reviews. I see. No, solely solely made eight million, but it's in its fourth week. Mm-hmm. It's only made um, one hundred and five uh, domestically, which is really good. So the movie's going to continue to do good business. What was the cost on that thing? Um, I'm glad you asked, Xander, because I will tell you that it was a sixty million dollar budget for Sony. That is, a, that is a big, big win for Warner Brothers. Then. That is a big win for yeah. Warner Brothers. Um, Magnificent Seven's in its second week. It has already made its money back to ninety million. Just pushed a hundred worldwide, so it'll probably still be a Box office success for Sony. I'm still saying we need our zombie versus cowboys movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come on, Sony, get on it. Yes. Yep. <laughs> All right. It. We know you love the zombie, Sony. Come on, let's see it. Show Speaking of zombies, shot. you know what goes kind of good with zombies? What's that? Pirates, I guess. Because no, no, they do not. No, no. I do not want to see a pirates versus zombie movie. <laughs> oh wait, that's called Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> yes, guys. For those of you who don't know. Um, the Fear of the Walking Dead had its season finale on AMC Sunday, which uh, Disney attached a Pirates of the Caribbean teaser for the a new movie, and it aired. It's a um, one minute, 50 second teaser. Basically, it introduces you to the new villain movie, Captain Salazar, played by Javier Bardem, and he's looking for Jack Sparrow. You know, did, afterward, did Disney go, we're sorry? Because <laughs> they should be. We don't need another Pirates movie. Mm-hmm. It's done. We were over with it. Why do we have to keep just 
reincarnating this this movie franchise again, again, and again, and again. Okay, the first movies, they sure, whatever, but it's just been downhill since the third movie. Chad, I mean, what did you think about the teaser? Uh, that teaser. First off, I feel like that they're reusing a certain location that everyone remembers from The Curse of the Black Pearl. I don't think it's so, the same island. I know, but it reminded me so much of it because of the cave entrance. Because You think they're the, going back through to... He's Pir- like Dave Morta. Well, you think they're going yeah. back to the old aesthetics of Pirates of the Caribbean 1? Yeah, I think so. I would, I would like it if they did that. It would be good. I'm not... But also them to do that. Also, no love interest. Yeah. However, moving on from that, I believe someone mentioned a while back ago that Disney needs to stop succeeding. Hey, this might be my chance. Yeah, and I I feel that this movie could be that that film my, that's my, going my to, absolute one that just yeah just bombs. Yeah, that can totally Please bomb and bomb. trip up Disney good, for a while. Good. They need to get some failure like every other studio. Mm-hmm. Chris, to, like, your take. Their wares. <laughs> my what? Intake. My intake. Of the teaser. Intake? Of the pirate teaser. Honestly, I, I have to uh, agree with Chet. Like, it reminded me so much of the first movie just with ghosts, I guess. But they're still dead and they pretty much do exactly what they did from the first movie. What they also did from the second movie and the third movie, yeah, the fourth movie. But this also doesn't include a love interest. It does, however, include Will Turner. He's coming back with Wait, uh, how do we know there's Johnny no love Depp. Interest, though? How do you know that Will Turner's coming back? Because I read it Yeah, it's in, in the, the overview. <laughs> um, plus, Johnny Depp, or Captain... Captain, Captain Jack, Jack Sparrow. Captain Jack Sparrow. Captain Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow. Sparrow. Mm-hmm. Um, he's looking for the trident of Poseidon so that he can rule over the seas. Oh, oh hey, yeah, you're right. So I think that's I think it's going to be a good movie, and just because it is Pirates of the Caribbean, um, it's probably going to make a lot of money just because of the title. You know, you're probably right on that, but I still am just sick of Disney just reusing the same things again and again and again. Yeah, it's their MMO. It, it, yeah, not mm-hmm. MMO. MO to do this since they've been founded as a company to just find things that are good and just make them on the movies. And they're going to keep making them until they eventually die out. The last Pirates of the Caribbean movie, which was terrible, did make a billion dollars. You know, you shouldn't tell me that number because that's just disgusting. (laughs) So the Transformers 4. Oh, Jesus. That's even worse. (laughs) How about you, Daniel? What's your. Um, You know what? At least it probably cost them more to make Transformers, so I can get that on my plate. At least it is in Transformers. That's that's kind of the good thing. It's not. I don't see it necessarily being a cash grab at all. Just mostly because of the wait. How do you not see it being a cash grab? You really think they need another pirates? Well, it's it's a. Here's the thing, you definitely see you know where Disney is going with revitalizing their old films, uh, <laughs> putting it in live action. True, you know, well, well, and people are just eating it up. Well, the thing with Disney though, I mean, yeah. if you think back on it, like Snow White, that wasn't like something they made up. No, it's just right. a story they adapted. That yeah, was their right. first one. Every other story they've done, they haven't made an original one. Yeah. What is what? Name an original one that uh, uh, Disney has done. My, Titan A.E.? Well, a lot of the Pixar films are original. Yeah, that's not Titan really A. Disney. Those not are, necessarily. They're like a subdivision. They yeah, were, but I mean, that, that is but... Pixar. You yeah. Know? yeah. It's like, but Disney itself, the Disney stuff that you see, the Disney branded stuff. Yeah. Zootopia? It's like never yeah. Oh, yeah. original. Frozen? Zootopia. That's true. Zootopia yeah. was original. Yeah. Wreck-It Ralph? Mm, yes. You're pushing yeah. the button a little bit there. But, Richard, you know, that's going with, that's not going with those kind of 3D wrestler. animation movies, though. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know if you really include that. It's like the whole Pixar thing almost right there. But to be honest, Disney started off with animation. Yeah, yeah. yeah they did, absolutely. That's their threshold. That's what they made money off of. So that's well, what yeah. they're going to keep doing I mean and perfecting. Is Disney started off with imitation. They started right. off with taking other people's ideas and turning it into something. Right. Which yeah. everyone does, though. Oh, absolutely, but mm-hmm. there's a lot of studios that start off with making original ideas and not, like, taking them from other people. Right. Disney's just been continuing with that and hasn't really cared to stop. It's not necessarily that they were making their profit off of, you know, stealing stories from other people. Oh, I didn't say they, they stole them. I just meant they were using them. Well, they, yeah, they, yeah. They reinterpreted But things. they put a whole new perspective on how to make movies and what format movies can come in, yeah. especially with animation. But, I mean... That has nothing to do with how this parts of the Caribbean film is going to come out. It's obviously within the um, of the phase of Disney where they're turning everything into live action and revitalizing old stories that 
were either nostalgic or very profitable for the company. You know, I kind of wonder if Disney even really cares about it. Maybe this is just someone's pet project for the Pirates of the Caribbean. Because they have so much money from Marvel now. Do they really care anymore? Probably not. Anyway, I'm sorry, guys. We have to uh, move on to the next topic. So, Killing Two Birds with One Stone. Let's get into some Batman stuff. First thing. Batman. Mm -hmm. I sigh. (laughs) I sigh. I'm Batman. Uh, All right, so Ben Affleck has made an announcement regarding his Batman film, which will come out in 2018, 2019, with the film being called... That's right, guys. The, the Batman. The Batman. <laughs> the Batman. <laughs> how many? How many film? Uh, how many adaptations of Batman do they have to do? All of them. All of them. <laughs> Apparently, just in order to get it right. When it comes to the uh, title of the Batman, this is this was um, Ben Affleck's comments. The movie I think is going to be called The Batman. At least that's what we're going with right now. I might change it. That's all about I got right now. We're working on the script. The script is going well. I'm really excited to see what's going on. Along with that. Ben Affleck also made comments about Deathstroke being the villain in the Batman movie. Um, you know, people are asking him, why did you exactly choose this character as your first one-off with uh, Batman? This is what he has to say about that. He's a great villain because I just had an instinctive feeling that he would match up with him well. You know, a big admirer of characters as well, especially in the new 52, the way that they did Deathstroke. And I thought that could work. For those of you who don't know, Deathstroke's a mercenary. Very skilled in martial arts like Batman. You kind know, of a jerk. Kind of a jerk, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, can go toe-to-toe. So, um, Chet, do we like the Batman, and do you buy Ben Affleck's comments about Deathstroke? I appreciate the title a little bit, but as far as his uh, explanation goes, you do not say, I think. That's not professional in my mind. Yeah, I agree. That's a real... That could go real wrong I don't think Netflix's ever been really the professional type, I think, overall yeah. in his career. Because he's kind of been that, um, how do you say, like he came up as someone who's he's, from he's the street, from really. Boston, you know? Yeah, he's never Boston. really came up as like the person who knew all the acting stuff and what you're supposed to say and not say to the press. Right. But still, this is not the day for, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. Um, but uh, Deathstroke, yeah, by yeah, yeah. I'm better with Deathstroke mm-hmm. now. All right, all right, all right. Chris, you look distracted. Oh, uh, I was just continuing reading on the other um, comment about Deathstroke being the villain for the Batman. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I like the title. I guess. I, like I mean, the title. it's it's the Batman. It's pretty simple. It's not like. Batman versus Deathstroke or some bull crap like right. Batman versus Batman Superman. Batman versus Deathstroke Battle of the Sword. Like, <laughs> or Battle, Battle of the Armor or some under title like something. You, you know what? <laughs> I would like to see Affleck actually become our Robert Downey Jr. on the Wonder Brothers side, on the uh, DC side. Yeah. I would love yeah. it if he can pull this thing together where it stops being... Multiple Batmans or it stops just being him. DC um, <laughs> Universe. I, I like it if he just can make it so it doesn't suck. <laughs> I would really appreciate so that. So instead of a DC universe, we need the Batman universe to take over the DC universe because of the Batfleck universe. Yeah, so we need we need Batfleck. <laughs> we need Batfleck to be the the thing that brings it all together. He he's the thing that we need, but I don't know if we deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. Shout out to the Christian Bale Batman line. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> well, for, okay, but. <laughs> But for real, if we're gonna if we're gonna talk about like how this Batman is going to stand out amongst the rest, what what are they gonna change about the story? What aspect of the story are they really going to you know make emphasis of? Because when you have the 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 Christian Nolan uh, Batman, Christopher it, Nolan, Christopher Nolan, sorry, um, they it. It was a much darker tone and a much darker look at the whole Batman series. And that's what made it stand out between, you know, the the George Clooney and this potential uh Ben Affleck film. So I mean, looking at some of the some of the suits that uh the Batman uh has in this film, I mean, they're definitely taking it to a more advanced level. Well, I would like to see a more quick camp actually. I would like a lot more camp in it because I think DC overall needs more camp. Yeah. They're kind of missing that whole element that Marvel's pulled in with the cheesiness. 
I need cheesy yeah. one-liners. I, I need any... stupid dialogue <laughs> because it makes it breaks up all the monotony of this boring, dreary world that they live in. But they can't go full camp. They don't need to go full camp, but you need some campiness in it. That's what Batman needs to bring back into. He needs to bring in the stupid villains, and he needs to bring in some like bat now the, shark spray. Now the next question is: Is do you think Ben Affleck will fill that? fill that position i think he can well we do know that he it's sure going to be could. grittier though we we know he's going to get really angry because he mm-hmm. you know kills people in the batman v Superman. even just looking at some of these you know screenshots just how look how frustrated he is yes oh i'm so angry and notice how it kind of looks like duct tape the suit almost it's <laughs> great because i'm wearing this suit made out of duct tape i'm so angry it from goodwill i have to take this whole thing but, off to use the bathroom now oh. now do you guys think that this movie the batman will take place before or after the justice league in like interaction with De- uh deathstroke because deathstroke is being put into justice league no yeah 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 you know it's uh it's going to be um you know interesting to see i mean i'm looking forward to it i like uh, the fact that the um Batman movie is going to... I actually like the title for the movie, The Batman. Yeah. I think it's a cool little subtle title. Kind of wants... Uh, I guess seeing Ben Affleck's trying to really play an aspect that he wants the Batman to not be Batman. He wants him to be, like, the Batman. It's just so people are just like, what is that thing? It, it, it's the Batman thing. Or, you know, you know, play into that whole entire ideal that people want to fear Batman because he's a thing, not a person. Yeah. but And are we the, still focusing on the the... The location being Arkham Asylum, or are we past that now? Uh, we don't know any more details about the movie up to this point. So right now, anything that you're hearing right now is just still rumor mill. Okay, but my answer still wasn't wasn't answered at all. What was your question? I said, do you guys think that this will be taking place after or before Justice League with oh, Deathstroke? Uh, this because is before. No, th- I think he said it's before, didn't he? Because they, gonna they be said before? this was supposed to be the history of why Batman is so yeah, this murdery. is before. Yeah, why Batman is so murdery should be explained well, in this movie. No, no, I meant with Deathstroke, though. Oh, the Deathstroke oh, part. I, yeah, they did not talk about that as far as I know. Yeah. They're going to be fighting him in Justice League, and th- that movie's going to be coming out way before this well, one. Well, he's going to have a small, a really small, like, you'll see. It's going to be like the life. Joker from Suicide Squad. He's like, oh, you know, he's mentioned. He might be shown Even somewhere, but that's than it. that. Well, yeah, maybe worse. it's like, wait, wait, <laughs> maybe it might be like the beginning of Civil War. Where, where he catches the guy like in a oh seconds. right yeah yeah you know what I see what about. you're going for yeah. or they yeah. mention his character not really Deathstroke it's like oh hey you know he's right over there like he's up in a cell or something or maybe he right. like blows up a whole half of a city and then they're like oh no we need the Justice League what's the <laughs> Justice League we gotta make one oh no <laughs> and then don't even focus on the villain just focus on building the team up yeah pretty it's much. gonna be the entire movie all right that thanks for answering my question. Good. That work. I'm so glad we can answer your we question. Need to, we need to get a crew together. I've got a job. I know that. <laughs> well, I'm so glad we can finally answer your question. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to move on to the next story, which <laughs> yeah. is something that broke just today, about an hour ago. A live-action Mulan movie just got yep. greenlit. Yeah. And it's going Woo! to get a 2018 release date. You guys are applauding, but we just had a full discussion about cash grabs. and I know. Well, that, so. is, that is a full, full-on full cash grab right but there. Like you said before, nostalgia. Grab, yeah, the nostalgia. Mulan, I nostalgia. get the nostalgia. Yeah. I get it. But yeah. it's like, oh, my God. It's, it's, it's candy for that. the grown-ups. Mm-hmm. It's, it's again yeah. with this Disney stuff where it's like, you know what? We're just going to remake every yeah. single thing we've how do you How do you think like, the, the younger generation is going to feel when they grow up saying, like, oh, Oh, we were just spoon fed whatever our adults, our, our parents Watch were fed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. well, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's how it works with children. Well, you kind of just me. feed them what you had. Mm-hmm. That's I, what my parents yeah. did. With I me. mean, that's what I think. That's what I every see. every parent but, does but, with their children. But there was also content that we were provided from Disney that was original. I, okay, I wouldn't use original, but you know. Well, it's like when you get a new format of the thing you loved, you're going to show your kid that format because it's new. That's what Disney's been doing forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, they, yeah, yeah, okay, so some grandparent might have been read one of those books that they base their things on, but when your parents are, it sees that it's going to come out, and then they're going to show you the animated version because they don't want to read the book. Yeah. That's going right. to be what's going to happen. Quick question. Who voices Mushu? Oh, no. Uh, Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker? Chris Tucker? <laughs> Tucker? Yep. Jackie Chan. 
Jackie Chan. Oh, please. Yes. <laughs> no. Oh, we please. Need oh, God. <laughs> we need to see more of him. You know what? You know what? I need Jackie world. Chan to just be like some guy, and he's like the emperor. There was okay. A, that's what I'd like to see. I want Jackie Chan as emperor of China <laughs> in in that dynasty. Well, there there was a big issue that was rising up in uh, in Hollywood about. Um, the whitewashing of yes of uh, well no see there's a specific yeah, reason for that, that though it's well, they tried to use Chinese or Asian actors in Asia they don't sell they've tried okay. to use them they tried to use them again and again and again they cannot sell a movie when you put Asian actors as the ones for a list they won't watch them so it's like how are we supposed to justify putting in an Asian actor in there when we can't sell our movie to them. Mm. That's true. That's the stupidest part of it. It's like the Asians are the ones that, do, or that complain the most yeah. about it. Yeah. They're being an Asian person in the film. Talk about a different movie entirely, but Doctor Strange was, in fact, a victim of that situation. Yeah, you know? but isn't that supposed to just be like a reimagining as far as I know? Like there yeah. wasn't too much vo- They're vocalness. Forced to play there was a vocal minority yeah. about that. It's like, oh, my God, it's a, it's a woman now. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Chris. Wait. So I was just reading on the, the whole article thing, and... Possibly, do you think Eddie Murphy would still play Mushu? Does Eddie Murphy still act? Oh, hell yeah. I would be happy to see that. What is in a movie Eddie recently in that didn't really get any good reviews? People were just like, no, but Eddie Murphy was good in it, though. What was he in, though? Cool, I, I, no, <laughs> I, like, I would love to see stuff with Eddie Murphy in it. Don't get me wrong. I'm but, just like, what has he been in? Yeah. But then again, you don't want him being the, the showcase A-list. It's not an actor. But I, would, I want a movie with him. You know what? Like, I just want Eddie, Eddie Murphy, Murphy movie. Mulan. Give me a Beverly Hills Cup. <laughs> yeah. I know the remake. Man. Give me give me Eddie Murphy in it. Give Come me, on. Give me my haunted mansion too. Okay, that's and, a little too far. Okay, that's a little guys, too we're far. We're gonna take a short break. We're guys, we're gonna take a short break. Um when we come back, we're actually going to ground ourselves down in some T V news, mainly involving uh the Netflix Marvel TV shows. Luke we Cage. Back. We'll be talking about Luke Cage, um Iron Fist and Punisher when we come back. Welcome back to Film Reel. I'm your host, Matthew Wegg. Joining me, as always, is Chet Severn. Hey, guys. <laughs> and once again, we have Xander. Yo. Chris. Yo. And Daniel. What's up? All right, guys. Let's talk about some uh, Marvel Netflix stuff. Woo! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I some Luke Cage. <laughs> we are going to talk about Luke Cage. Not this show, specifically, but we're going to talk about Mike Coulter's comments about Luke Cage. Sweet Christmas. Ooh, revol- <laughs> Sweet Christmas. <laughs> Um, revolving oh, him, sweet. if his possibility of him being in the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe appearing in a movie or so, which he says that he probably won't appear in any of the Marvel movies or he won't get his own Marvel movie, which I think is kind of sad because for those of us who finished Luke Cage, mm-hmm. I mean... Everyone in the room, hopefully? Well, Chris has... Except three, for that guy. Chris has three episodes. I have three more. Yes, I'm on episode 11. Oh, my. Daniel has... I am... I am a, I'm a little lacking... I'll, I'll admit it. Uh, Chris, oh, that'd be two episodes, by the yeah. way, for 11. It's only 13. Yeah. No, no, he hasn't, he hasn't, he hasn't started 11. No. Oh. Not even even I got that. No. Yeah. All right. Anyway, but, like, I really like Luke Cage as a character. Like, he mm-hmm. is, like, sweet Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He's the most positive of, like, you know, the entire M&U characters. Like, well, I mean, those two are dark. We're going with the other ones. Oh, my God. They're dark. The mm-hmm. uh, freaking... Daredevil, oh god! And I've mentioned that there, there's points in those arcs for those characters where you just see those characters as um, assholes, basically. Well, they are. Yeah, but Luke Cage mm-hmm. is like Luke Cage. Luke Cage never was an asshole. Yeah, and plus, if he was, he would have to be um, doing some very. Um, Wait, I'm, I'm trying to think of, of a moment where he's kind of a jerk. Kind of the beginning. Kind of the beginning. No, didn't want to do anything. No, no, it was no, always no. like no, because you, you, he wasn't really a jerk. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of any moment where he wasn't. So he had to like give me some time here. Where I'm I thinking where he was a jerk at some point. But anyway, do do we feel like Luke Cage deserves like a 90 minute movie? I don't, I don't think Solo. No, because he, no. he's, yeah. he's never been that guy in the other stuff. He's more been like their the muscle for a yeah. lot of the thing. He'd be good on teams. Like I think eventually he's gonna be in the Avengers. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. That's what I, th- I would be saying too, is that he's te- he's more of a team player in the comics. So since they've introduced his background story on Netflix, that way they can um, put him on board for so, a Avengers movie. Yeah, and I mean I couldn't see him in a movie considering all the 
the different sex scenes that they do have in the shows, <laughs> in those shows specifically, like Jessica Jones. I think Daredevil, actually. I don't know. I don't uh, think there was there any of <laughs> There's a lot of tension in Daredevil. Those I don't three shows, though, are like yeah. amazing, and they're like they're filmed really well. But Except remember last <laughs> episode when you said you hope they don't bring him back with an afro? <laughs> <laughs> oh well, no, I loved, I love the part spoilers, where he comes spoilers, in spoiler with warning, no. spoiler that warning. thing, Sorry, guys, no and spoilers. it was awesome. Put a big spoiler like alert sound spoiler. Alert. Sp- Spoiler. Unless you've seen. Well, okay. Should I talk about the, the part we were talking about right there? Or? No, no, we're not gonna talk about it. Oh, but it was a great part. Okay, but, there's a lot of Easter eggs that are going on <laughs> in uh, just, so in great Luke Cage. I said for to, one that you people need have ignored. to pay very close and careful attention to a lot of the things. A lot of the wording that they're saying is stuff from the comic. Anyway, um, no, but you know what was also really good about that show? The music. Yeah. Uh, it was definitely a touch of R&B that I wasn't used to, that's for sure. No, and, like, coming from a guy, I'm just like, mm-hmm. every time, like, you know, they're in the club and someone was, like, rehearsing for their show, I was really digging it. Yeah. Just digging like, it? Digging it. I don't the know if you're allowed to use that good. word. I like the beats No, no, they had. <laughs> All good. Going um, for it. Acting was great, but no Luke Cage Marvel movie. I even like the villain's piano playing. That was impressive. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You did or Amazing. did not? I enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. Actually. I liked yeah, yeah. it, too. I was like, you didn't enjoy no, it? No, I liked it. <laughs> oh, okay. But the MMU has uh, things to look forward to, as I like to call this. Um, we got some news today about Iron Fist. Iron Fist? Woo-hoo! What could that be? <laughs> Whoa. Um, it's the next uh, <laughs> MMU series. It follows character Danny Rand, who becomes a warrior. and well, who, becomes Iron Fist. He becomes Iron Fist, a, war- uh, a kind of... Rogue more sure it's that you know I was having a discussion about this one the other day and people were saying oh it's going to bring back the mystic stuff Doctor Strange Iron Fist is not Doctor Strange stuff. no he's no, not. never has been he's he's more of the hand he's yeah. more of Daredevil's enemies he's more of the mm-hmm. kung fu stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. he's going to yeah. be that guy who comes in there and has to do kung fu stuff we get to see all the interesting martial arts things and yeah. then we're going to get a lot more weird Eastern yeah Eastern it, is where yeah. we're going with uh, it's what's going to happen there all right. No, but what we got today is that we do have a premiere date for this uh, the, the season, the series premiere. So uh, what do I need to take off work? Uh, St. Paddy's Day. Okay. St. Uh, Paddy's I'll Day. I'm drunk anyway, so it'll be good time. March 15th. Yeah. March 17th. Man, we didn't have like just a party, I, like Iron Fist party. Everyone just gets hammered and Why watching just Iron come Fist. Here? <laughs> so guys, March 17th, 2017 is when they're going to drop that season of uh, the, the, the series of mm-hmm. Iron Fist. On good old St. Patty's Day, so be wearing your green because uh, Danny Rand will be wearing his green as well. Oh, yeah. Um, it's going to be exciting. You know, that'd be ironic if there's like no green in the episode. That will be totally <laughs> ironic. Well, it kind of looks I like I mean, they did enough with the green the poster. Concerned. It would be funny, though. If you look at the set photo from the Twitter account of Netflix, you see no green in this picture. Uh oh. Oh. It's going to get punched. <laughs> but. Anyway, that but, doesn't mean it could be for the first episode. But, like, the MCU, this Netflix series isn't just building the Defenders. It's also kind of building all the side stories. Like, you know that Iron Fist and Luke Cage are going to get into their Heroes for Hire storyline. Oh, I cannot wait for Heroes for Hire. Because be then nice. you're going to include Jessica Jones in there. And then they can actually branch into Spider-Man. Because they could. They could. that specifically Heroes for Hire storyline is going to involve the Green Goblin at some point. Which will be an awesome transition to get... Spider-Man right into the Netflix series. And that would help connect the dots again. Yeah, it would be great. I would love it if we get to see Spider-Man into all this stuff where we get to see Luke Cage step into the big rigs with uh, going after Green Goblin. Mm -hmm. You know what else is awesome? Uh, The Punisher. We uh, yeah. awesome or evil or no awesome awesome awesomely like, well he's like violent. the only guy who gets to kill people yeah awesomely violent character they have just mm-hmm. began filming his series for the Netflix uh, show lineup and he has an awesome beard now <laughs> <laughs> that's right so guys what do you think of Dang. Punisher series starting film I'm excited for it yeah Punisher I definitely want to see this that beard he is amazing perf- he was portrayed yeah. very well by Bernthal in season two of Daredevil. Yes. And I'm when I heard that they were making this, it was kind of an out of the blue thing. Yeah. So I was like, okay, they made room for him. Sweet. <laughs> I, I never had a nostalgic connection with uh, 
with the the Punisher at all, but I'll be very excited to check it out at least. He looks like he's putting in putting in some some sweat. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just like he's going to be an awesome Punisher. He was great in Daredevil yeah. mm-hmm. in season two. That that role specific. calls for a lot too. No, Definitely, Punisher, well, Punisher is just going to be great. It's going to yeah. be an overall really good character to have up there because he's going to be ridiculous. He's mm-hmm. going to be exactly. a murder fest. We're going to have nothing but murder for like. The entire time he's on screen. 13 episodes of murder. 13, 13 murder-filled <laughs> yeah. episodes. I was going to say a murder an episode, but knowing Punisher, it's probably going to be more than one. Speaking of episode length, let's get off the side topic. I feel like um, we guys seen most of the Netflix shows. I feel like the shows have benefit from cutting an episode or two off each season. Because for some reason for me, near like the end of each series, I feel like it drags. Like, the last five episodes feel like a big drag, and then the final episode's kind of good. I don't know if I felt that way for Luke Cage at all. I was kind of feeling that. Well, we'll get more into this in spoilers. I felt it in episode 13 for Kate, Luke Cage, but otherwise... Oh, uh, you mean because of the, kind of the way they were ending it? it yeah. Kinda dra- I think the last part of that thing kind of et- dragged on. Mm-hmm. I thought they could have dropped it at quite a few points in the last episode. I like that episode overall, though, because for me, there's this thing that's like... Well, this this resolved really quickly. Then it turns out that no, this is well, yeah, we're not you know done what? yet. Actually, <laughs> actually, if you look back on it, there is no good endings That's in true. the Marvel Netflix universe at all. No, there are always bad endings. Mm-hmm. There, where is the positive one? In a, maybe maybe Daredevil season one. Daredevil has the better endings, both. But seasons, Daredevil season but... two was not. Well, true, but that was least... not a positive ending. I mean, well, I think I think they end them. They end all of those shows like that for a reason, so they they can keep the series going. True. Yeah. Because I mean, if you look at it, these three shows on Netflix have done probably a lot better than most Marvel movies. What do you mean? Like, what do you yeah, mean? enlighten like, me on like, this. I, just, I feel like <laughs> they they have not made Marvel nearly as much money. I'm betting. No. Well, because it's directed towards a small audience, not big. No, it's because style Netflix. Audience. Netflix to say this is the money you get for it, make us this. Yeah, right. But I'm saying they were they, like all these shows. Like I'm really like happy with the way that they were shot, the way that they were filmed, the way that they were like story. Well, this is why I'm lo- I'm so loving the whole idea of how do you say it? this private studio yeah. Yeah. productions of TV shows. It's much better. Yeah. In television TV because they don't have to care yeah. and they don't have to go on for e- forever. And they yeah. don't have to go season after season after season yeah. after season. You can do like one season to make it a storyline. It's like oh my god, it's a story. I don't need to be mm-hmm. episodic. And they don't really nobody cares. To, they don't have to worry about censors either. They also don't have to yeah. be like telling you what happened every other episode for ten minutes to, so you knew all the stuff you missed from the other episodes. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, that, that I think is the biggest thing that we're seeing with all these streaming content providers. I'm going to love it when Amazon really breaks into this with their new studio and all the stuff they're producing. Speaking about money, and to totally change gears. Oh? Warner Brothers has recently announced. Oh, no. That Please don't say it. Hype. Hype. I don't no. want the hype. hype. No, Please no, don't hype. No hype. No, no hype. No hype. No hype. No Please hype. hype. Um, Please that, don't hype. The Harry Potter movies. No. Nope. All right, hype. Are going to be released in IMAX for one week. <sighs> Woo! I, cool. Hype. Like I'm fun. so not down for that. That's um, October 14th dumb. is uh, the time this is going down. Hype. All eight of the films will be presented in IMAX with uh, the first two being digitally remastered. <laughs> nice. Um, it's going to be for one week only. You can, I don't know if it goes by. I think it's supposed to be like a day-by-day thing where... This day will be this movie. This day will be that movie. And so that would on. make sense. See, I just don't, yeah, I do not, not see the, the appeal sense. in IMAX anymore at all. Yeah. I think it's over hyped, hype ridiculously. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not it's, hyping it's them. So over hyped. I'm not hyping the, the IMAX. IMAX. I'm but hyping the. But that's the, that's yeah. what they're doing. They're making it the yeah. IMAX thing again. I don't care about IMAX. Get it's it it's just head, the concept studios. of bigger is better. True. I get that, but I don't want to pay like what is it thirty dollars a ticket for an yeah. IMAX when I can pay like half that. To they're go probably see it do, they're probably going to be doing a bundle type deal. Oh, yeah. I bet they will, but yeah. it's still it, they overcharge for something hey, and they expect hey. me to like it. Hey, hey, at least it's two D. IMAX is sometimes the way to go, man. And just as long as they don't go, Did you like, sure, if you want to spend more money, hey, I'm just going to remake the movie. Did you again. see Civil War and IMAX <laughs> like drop Star down Wars for the seventeen <laughs> minutes and you just get that wide aspect ratio? That was worth don't the money for. Dare. So. Um, because you guys <laughs> usually don't read these links. Um, <laughs> I actually read the link, my friend. Well, they're going to be selling them with tickets of four separate admissions. Oh. Ooh. Yes. I'm sorry. Four show it accesses and, of course, a festival access, whatever, packages, you know, blah, blah, blah. Xander. 
I still think it's stupid. <laughs> I, 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 I can I, I hate I, the freaking okay. things on this. I like watching it at my house. Okay. I I honest. Okay. I understand this, but I honestly prefer this than revamping a dead f- series or a dead film and putting it, it in a different aspect a with the live action. It's, it's Warner Brothers. Give them time. They'll kill. I, another, I, I, they'll I, beat I, another <laughs> dead horse. That's what they do. It's their motto. Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those. Man. Uh, okay. Every single thing they do, they beat a dead horse. I, I'm not denying this, <laughs> but I honestly prefer this platform of uh, of putting these films back into a movie theater experience rather than you know just doing a rehash. No, well, I, I it get is the idea of, of do, redoing them. them. Yeah. Uh, well, yes. I mean that's that's a different story. Just kind of set in the same world. No, which is true. I'm, I'm very excited yeah. for that movie. I yeah. I am too. I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm down to see it. <laughs> but right, uh, guys, um, well, we're done hyping for today. Hype. Uh, hype. 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 Oh, the hype. This has been a fun episode. I'm going to go down the line and people will you know where you guys can follow them, starting with Daniel. All right. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, let yeah, me bring he has up my turn. phone to check. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I, have, I, have a, I have a few different names. Um, Gotta make sure you get the right one. Yeah. You can follow me on Twitter at, at Belikoff, B E L L A K O F F. And you can follow me on Instagram at not Lopatin, N O T L O P A T I N. All right, Chris, where can I follow you? Uh, you can follow me on all social media sites, probably under the name of Monkey Ruler 12 and or CJ Lara. And you can find me on Facebook and Twitter at Chet Severn. And you can follow me at the Real Xander Blake. And you guys can follow me at Matthew Wegg and all the various social medias. And please check out my Facebook page, Matthew C. Wegg. I'm going to be posting some stuff on there pretty soon. And that does it for this episode of Film World today, guys. Woo. Bye-bye. See Have you. Hype. Hype. <laughs> 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 <laughs>